Welcome to the CHEM11 experiment, the molar mass of carbon dioxide, also known as the molecular weight of carbon dioxide. In this experiment, we will collect a sample of carbon dioxide, and we will take measurements in order to obtain the mass, pressure, volume, and temperature of our CO2 sample. The first thing that we'll need to do is to set up our apparatus. We have a couple of flasks, flasks A and B. We have some glass tubing. We have a calcium chloride drying tube that will remove the water from the air, hopefully from our carbon dioxide sample. And we will set that up using the following experiment diagram. You can see we have a flask A where we have a thistle tube for adding acid into our calcium carbonate chips. Carbon dioxide will pass through the drying tube and be collected in flask B. Flask B is covered with foil, and we will see a little bit more about that later. Let's take some preliminary measurements here. First, we will have to take our collection flask, flask B, and get its mass. We will get its mass with the foil, with air inside. Record the mass onto your data sheet. We will next take the temperature of this air. You will record this temperature as well as the mass. And you will use this with the density of air table provided in the procedure. This can be used to find the mass of the air that was inside the flask. Once we know that mass, we will be able to know the mass of the flask by itself without any air. Next, we will set up flask A by placing a sufficient amount of calcium carbonate, around 25 grams, into the flask along with some water. Then we make sure that the thistle tube is placed properly so that the acid is delivered straight down onto the calcium carbonate chips without any escape of bubbles up into the thistle tube. All of the gas will exit on the tube, out the tube on the right side and go through the drying tube where moisture will be removed and then the gas is collected inside flask B where it pushes out the air that was in the flask to begin with. When everything is all set up, we're ready to deliver our acid through the thistle tube and you'll see here the acid is going to be poured carefully down the thistle tube into the flask and the CO2 begins to form as the acid hits the calcium carbonate chips. Our job here is to produce a steady flow of CO2 gas and to fill flask B. But while we wait, we can take the barometric pressure reading. The barometer is located on the wall in the laboratory and consists of a U-tube of red liquid shown by the two tubes on the left. The pressure pushes down from the atmosphere on the middle red tube, and so we will read that pressure of the atmosphere going downwards. There are units of both inches and millimeters of mercury, and you should record your reading in millimeters of mercury. Keep in mind that we are reading downward not upward because the pressure from the atmosphere is coming from the top. This pressure will be equal to the pressure of the CO2 gas that we collected since we allowed it to equilibrate with the atmosphere. The first mass measurement is complete and we will take that flask plus our carbon dioxide gas and weigh it on our balance. This will be our first collection of carbon dioxide gas recording that mass and then adding more acid into our apparatus to make more carbon dioxide. So we'll repeat the same experiment again by adding more acid, continually adding acid to make sure that we have a steady flow of CO2. Once we let that wait for at least another 15 minutes to make sure we've completely pushed all the air out of flask B, we can take our second mass measurement. The two mass measurements are consistent, then we will not need 
to do a third production of CO2 gas. Since this is the final flask of carbon dioxide, we will need to take its temperature before the CO2 escapes. Now we will need to find the volume of the flask by filling it with water and taking its mass. So this is the mass of the filled flask with water on a triple beam balance because it's too heavy for the electronic balances. We'll record that mass on our data sheet. Then we'll take the water's temperature. Once we have the water's temperature and the mass, we will be able to use this to find the volume of the flask. The volume of the flask is obtained by taking the mass of the water and using the density to convert that into volume. Now you're ready for all the calculations. Go to it and see what your molar mass of carbon dioxide is. Thanks for watching.